It's time to gather loved ones together for all the holidays' best spread. Lynn's has great prices on all your favorite Thanksgiving items, from delicious turkey with all the fixings to mashed potatoes and yummy pies. We have everything you need to create your perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Whether it's cooking the traditional meal, completely store-bought, or a combination of both, your best holiday meal starts here. Learn more and start shopping today at lynnsgrocery.com. Lynn's, where delicious begins. Hi, I'm Govind J. Raman, and this is Paper Napkin Wisdom. Today we have Ashton Gustafson. Ashton's an entrepreneur, an author, and speaker. Uh, he's a really dynamic personality. He comes across as so accessibly and authentically. And you'll hear that in our conversation. Let's listen in on my conversation with Ashton Gustafson. Yes, sir. Hey, Ashton. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear you fine. And it's recording. Awesome. So, yeah, maybe there was something with our connection that was kind of weird. I don't know. I mean, I I was... My only thought was... I've never used Skype much, so didn't know if it was anything off on my end or, or, or what. Yeah, maybe maybe it was just a different version that it was not working with and not playing nicely with, but it's definitely recording now, so we're good. We're actually awesome. recording, so we can go right in. Let's just go silent for a second. When I come back, we'll be live and ready to go. You got it. Ashton, welcome to Paper Napkin Wisdom. Really excited to have you here today. Govin, man, it's a joy to be here. I uh, totally think what you're doing is uh, super cool and can't wait to have this conversation today. Yeah, I totally agree. Your message is super cool. What you've written on a napkin is amazing. Can you read it for everybody listening, please? Absolutely. So on a napkin I wrote, gather your instruments and let the music play. Why did you share that with me today? <laughs> Yeah, that's a long, it, it is a long road to get to that answer, I can tell you that. Um, you know, a handful of years ago, I was at a crossroads um, in life, in business, in, in all of this, really. And um, I came across a guy that actually you interviewed, Alex Sharfin. And um, I, I was really young, still am pretty young, but I was just became an owner in a business and was looking to grow what we were doing. Um, and... I sat down with Alex Sharfin, and he asked me a point-blank question, you know, when I was sharing with him the crossroads of where I was going, what I was wanting to do, the things that I saw was possible for our business, uh, and really personally for my life as well. And and he said, Ashton, can you define your core values for me? Um, and I kind of looked at him with a, like a deer in the headlights, and I, I said, no. I can't. And he said, can, can you tell me why you would hire someone or when you would fire someone? And better yet, can you tell me why you get out of bed every day? And um, unfortunately, in that moment, I didn't have that answer. But on the other side of that question, um, what I really found out is that Alex was asking me, what were the instruments that make the music that I make here on earth? Uh, for me, I've chosen music as the metaphor of success. And so when I wrote Gather Your Instruments and Let the Music Play, um, you know, I'm writing a book right now called Let the Music Play, a manifesto on making music with your life, family, and business. And in that book, I write that the music refers to the experience that is heard, felt, and seen and the story, meaning, purpose, and fulfillment that unfolds when one's values, passions, talents, ideas, and core beliefs come together, come alive, and crescendo in this world we exist in. So that's a very long answer to your question, but I write down Gather Your Instruments because I believe that we as humans, as business leaders, as husbands, as dads, whatever our leadership is on earth, We've got to go define and find the instruments that are going to make our music. And when we do that, the world clears a path for you. And you begin making this metaphorical music, which is the success that we're all after. I I, I love the metaphor. 
I love the story. So let's go back and pretend we're ans- asking that question now. Absolutely. How would you answer that question differently today? So I went on a personal retreat uh, with my wife to answer that question. Um, we went to Chicago in February. I wouldn't encourage anyone to do that unless you're wanting to just be in a room and think for a while, which is what we did. Um, but I really said, uh, I told my wife, I said, I want us to go get away, and I want us to define these instruments that not only exist in our business, but really overlap into our personal lives. And when we did that, we left that short two-day trip to Chicago um, with an acronym that's Our Story. And if, if you read it out, the instruments that I've chosen for music in my life, in my family, in my business are these right here. An obsession with service, utilize the imagination, rapid response, strategy in all things, truth and trust, old school work ethic, relationship focus, and then this idea that you get what you give, you know, the law of the harvest, what you plant, one day you will sow, what you sow, one day you will reap. Um, and so those are my instruments, man. And any time I feel off or I feel life isn't right or business isn't going where I believe it should, I go back to those instruments, I gauge myself, and I can really find out, hey, am I making noise or am I making music? And that's really the whole concept of the book, too, that I'm writing is, like, you can make noise or you can make music with your life. And, unfortunately, noise isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just not noticed. It doesn't change things. It doesn't change people. But your music, you know, that's your great big why uh, in life. And, w- and when we can all define that, I always say, show me a, show me a man that knows why and he's never looking uh, what to do. You know, a guy that knows his why always knows what he needs to do and how he needs to do it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I love the metaphor because you can you can extend that metaphor further, right? And you can say that when other people have instruments, are they playing with you? And, you know, is that adding to an orchestra or is it just turning into noise because Absolutely. they're playing a different Absolutely. tune? Yeah. I mean, it's one great at, – at the end of the day, the goal, you know, I'm not – My great big why in life is to see a generation of passionate workers rise up in the medical field, in business, in the arts, in sciences, uh, through literature, through writing, you name it. Like, you know, sometimes I think uh, we're given a box of crayons in kindergarten and then about junior high they they take our crayons from us and we all lose this creativity that we've been swimming in for years. Um, and some of us never go back to that. And my hope, I mean, the great big why of my life is that my music would encourage other people in their music that at the end of the day we would see a generation rise up making a great big symphony here on earth. Yeah, that, 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 sounds, that sounds really powerful. So how has this, so, so looking at the time when you sat with Alex and he asked you those questions to now, how has your life changed with this discovery? <laughs> Man, uh, well, for one, I have a mantra to live by. I mean, my family now, my friends, I mean, it, it isn't unusual for us to say, let the music play, or is the music playing? I mean, this thing has overlapped into our lives, into, um, it's, I mean, it's changed us. Um, business-wise, I mean, here, here's, here's what's scary. We defined who we were and what we were doing. Um, and we totally, we, you know, I, I run two real estate companies and we started our marketing for years was talking about how much property we sold and, and how much property we, we sold compared to the next guy. We've totally changed our marketing to just sharing what our values are, just sharing what our instruments are. You know, Simon Sinek, the guy that wrote, um, start, start, with, why. start with why, you know, he says people don't do business with you because of what you do. They do business with you because of why you do it. So, We've got television ads that literally are just every one of my team members saying, we believe in truth and trust. We believe in an obsession with service. We believe that you get what you give. That's our marketing now, and we're finding that people are doing business with us because they believe what we believe. And I can tell you, the day I had that conversation with Alex, our office had 10% market share, which is enormous. Like, offices don't have 10% market share in real estate markets. Today, on any given month, we're 20 to 25 percent. We've doubled that market share. Um, I've also moved in, started another office in another market. 
uh, and really even started now to share this simple message across the country. We've been to San Diego, Charleston. In the next few months, I'm hitting Indianapolis, Vegas, L.A., uh, Ocean City, Maryland, um, Arkansas. We're going all over, and it's a message that really is resounding with people. Um, and I, for me, the beautiful part of it is that it spills over outside of business. I mean, we as business guys, it's kind of all we think about sometimes, the daily grind, you know, growing your business, growing market share, growing profitability. But when you find something that spills over into every area of life, um, for me, that's been so rewarding. And when I get notes and emails and calls from people that say, um, I'm making music now, I can tell you I, I sleep really well after a day when I get a call like that. Yeah, I can, I can totally see why that would be the case. And it is amazing that when everything is aligned with our values, it stops being work and starts being fun. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's, that's the thing is, you know, the, we, I talk about the music in the book, of course, let the music play, but, but the music, you know, that's when things feel right. That's when your tempo is there. That's when harmony is happening between all these different things. Um, and, and, you know, there's rhythm to that. And I think that, um, the noise sometimes, you know, we, when life is frustrated, when we're frustrated with life and it feels noisy, um, we feel out of balance. We, we don't feel the rhythm. We don't feel rhyme and harmony and all that. And I think, again, it's just why the metaphor of music seems to just cross over perfectly with those of us that are seeking to take our lives, our family, our businesses to the next level. Yeah. And... And, and what do you do? What's, what's the test that you use? You said that you, you know, frequently will check for alignment with your instruments. You know, yeah. And let, let's say, let's even say, continue the metaphor and say you're tuning your instruments. What are you doing? What's that process look like for you? Yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, I didn't think we'd go down this road on this conversation, but I I have a sheet of paper that I look at every single day. At the very top, just says, let the music play. Over on the side, it lists things like melodies, tempo, soul, lead vocals, uh, work ethic, uh, inspiration, all these different things that go into, um, you know, really musicianship and becoming a musician. I mean, nobody just rolls out of bed one day and knows how to play an instrument. Like, there, there's, it takes time. Um, it takes patience. You really have to romance yourself with these instruments. And so I gauge kind of the music each day that I'm making, uh, the melodies for me, melodies, you know, and I'm, I'm getting pretty abstract here, I apologize, but the melodies for me in life, uh, you know, are being a husband and a father. Um, those are those things in music, the melodies that we sing. If I sing about my music, I want it to be, you know, about my family. The tempo of my music is a very spiritual thing. Uh, as business guides, we can sometimes get out of whack, you know, burn the candle at both ends. My tempo is very uh, sensitivity to the spiritual side of our lives. Um, the soul of my music I have here, growing others, human investment, and leadership. Um, so I just think about where can I be doing that? Where can I be feeding into my team today? Who needs an attaboy? Who needs an girl? Things like that. And then the lead vocals for me, um, you know, I just think, my wheelhouse in life, I just put creative, writing, speaking, and art. Like, that's just what I want to do. Um, I've chosen the real estate industry um, as a business, but really I've chosen it as the as the blank canvas to paint the art that I want to make, to make the music I want to make. Um, so that's really how I've chosen to, ga- to gauge this. And for those that are listening, you know, my encouragement would be um, – the best thing about the concept of let the music play is that it's success on your terms. Like, there's a reason why none of us can really define what good music is. I mean, we've all, we've all got a different thing. You know, some of us, some like Sinatra, some like Timberlake, some like uh, Metallica, some like, you know, symphony music. I mean, all of us have this definition of music that really no one can put their thumb on which is why the beauty is to the individual and to the uniqueness of the individual that can say, that can come to the world and say, these are my instruments and this is the music I make. And, and, and I tell you, the world responds when people are grounded in that truth. 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I really, it really resonates with me. And what's, and again, there's, there's no pun intended um, with resonance. But I think what's amazing about what you've just shared with me is that you've created a whole bunch of other words and phrases to remind yourself the commitment that you've made to yourself or, or where, remind yourself where you need to be. And that helps you tune yourself into your vision, in, into your values every single day. This is something you do very intentionally, right? It's something you do on purpose. Yeah. I mean, that, you, you know, um, I, I tell you, it, just an excerpt out of the book that I was working on today, it's, it's up here on my computer right now. I write, music is not an accident. For music to occur, it takes two things, instruments and, of course, musicians, which that's us, to play those instruments and orchestrate them in a way they were intended to be played. You cannot just look at a stage of instruments and ask them to produce music. The principles of every instrument have to be learned and eventually loved by the musician. Music is work. Music is progress. Music is intentional. So you hit the nail on the head, man. I mean, um, I couldn't say it any better. It 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 is very, very intentional, um, very strategic. But again, it's that alignment that you and I are talking about. When you get behind that alignment, um, the music starts to play. So, what's our role here as, as entrepreneurs and leaders? You know, we all have teams to manage. We, we, uh, what's our place in helping our teams pick up their instruments, play yeah. the music? You know, um, Benjamin Zander wrote the book The Art of Possibility, um, which is uh, in my opinion, it's a top five for me. I mean, I, I listen to that book over and over and over. And he's a, um, uh, he leads the orchestra. I think he leads the um, Boston um, Symphony. Um, and he's their maestro, if you will. And um, he talks about how he never touches an instrument when he leads the symphony. That he must connect with people, and they must feel the music from him. And while he never touches an instrument, he is responsible for the overall music that is heard in the audience behind him. Um, and I think that's a beautiful just picture and portrait of what true leadership is. You know, the the closer um, you know, the closer people are to the front lines of our businesses and sales or whatever the more control they really have over the whole customer experience. And those of us as leaders sometimes, uh, we're in the back end. We're not on the front lines. My opinion of leadership is that we are to consistently keep that music in front of everybody, that grand idea, that grand purpose, the meaning, the fulfillment about what we're all after. And if you can keep that um Keep that in front of your people. I think that's what a leader does well. A, a leader doesn't really point out what to do, or a leader doesn't really say this is how you should do it and what it should look like. There's a lot of freedom in leadership, I believe, um, between the leader and the follower. I think a great leader inspires, brings out meaning, and brings that metaphor to his people. Yeah, I think it's fascinating you bring up Ben Zander. And and you know his art of possibility is is really inspiring. I, I, you know, yeah. the, there's one there's a quote that I remember he talks about the 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 greatest compliment he ever got or something like that is is something that his father said after hearing him deliver a, a class, a master class or something like that, and it was something to the effect that I see that you're actually someone who heals. Mm. And he. Uh, does that resonate with anything that you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I feel like we could take the rest of this call and just talk about the art of possibility. <laughs> I mean, it's such an, an amazing book. You know, he talks about giving an A, you know, about his students, you know, from, from the very get-go when he used to teach music classes, he would make his students write him a letter on the first day of the semester saying why they would get an A at the end of the semester. You know, they paint that possibility on day one, and then they're not freaking out about what we must study and what I must do right or I'm going to pass or fail. You know, they just paint me why you're going to get an A. And and those letters that he would get would be unbelievable. And, you know, the followers that we have, I feel like sometimes they feel like they're, 
that they're, you know, watching out for conduct cuts from us or they must be doing right all the time. I think leaders, we got to give A's. Give A's from the get-go. You know, raise people up to that potential. Tell them where their value is, how unique they are, what they're capable of, how specific their music they can make is, and watch out what happens. I mean, I, you know, I thought about this today. This is the quote that I thought about this morning. People don't get enough yeses in life. Like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't be that. No, you can't do this. No, you can't buy that. No, you can't have it. Like, no is given a lot to people. But a yes, a yes to your music, a yes to your creativity, a yes to your uniqueness, a yes to the reason you were sent here, watch out. I mean, that raises people up when we give them those powerful, powerful yeses. So I think a leader knows when and where to give yeses and very, very rarely gives a no, holds back no's only if needed, but mostly is looking, where can I give a yes to somebody? Really powerful. So so what what happens when there is a lack of alignment? I mean, uh, your team, you're encouraging them to, to play their music, but you discover that you're just not aligned. Uh, on yeah. the instruments and, and how to play them. What do you do? You know, and, and, and here's the deal, like, sometimes, um, sometimes there isn't alignment. Like, sometimes some people just aren't going to be on board with the music you're seeking out to make. And I think from a leadership role, that's a great way just to say, you know what, this isn't for us. Like, we're not, th- th- we don't have a connection here. I mean, like, we're after this thing called music, and, hey, if this isn't how you, if, you know, if the way our company has chosen to define music, if, if you're not on board with it, then you should have the right to go find whatever that music is. I mean, I think, you know, there, there's kind of a kind of a different side to it. It kind of says, you know, it's not for everybody. I mean, you know, if, if people are wanting to play a certain song in the midst of the song we're trying to do and it doesn't work, then that's a great opportunity to say, hey, this may not be for us. But at the same time, you know, if it's an inspiration thing, I mean, I think you just got to bring people back to the core. And we often talk in our office about the noise versus the music, the music versus the noise. What are we doing? I mean, with ad campaigns, you know, we'll say, no, that's noisy. Or, oh, that's the music. Um, you know, you just, it, you got to bring people back to that core sense of reality, of the experience that's unfolding when you're making your music. And I think that what's really interesting about it is when you're talking about all of this terminology, which is really authentically about how you feel, how your values are brought to life in your world. And this, you know, that same metaphor may not work for everybody, but whatever it is, it pervades. It's everywhere through your language. And and it's, it's amazing to me how often you repeat that. It's almost like the beating of a drum. Well, it, it, it is. And if, if you've read any of my blog entries, I'm consistently asking people to bring us a metaphor. Like, Govan, you saw something that we all didn't see in a simple napkin on a table. Um, and now we're all better for it. And that metaphor is shaping the lives of people. And that metaphor is speaking to people. And I just, I, I've got this core belief that we were all sent here to bring a message, to bring some disclosure, to si- shine some light on something that maybe the world didn't see. And we all have that responsibility. Um, we all do. And so, yeah, bring us a metaphor. If music isn't the metaphor that you can align with, then go find a, a different metaphor. But I know that, you know, when you've got that overlapping over your life, um, mm-hmm. There's very few things that we're going to leave behind when we're not here. Metaphors are one of them. You know, like we're not, you can't take your money with you. You can't, there, you know, there's all these different things that we sometimes hold to high standards. But at the end of the day, when the credits roll on my life, on your life, um, I have to think that people are going to have a sense of something. And, and what is that metaphor that we all leave behind? For me, I've chosen music. Um, in that metaphor, there's millions to choose from. I think we all just have to find one um, and and really have our days guided by it. Yeah, I, I agree. Let me let me rewind to something that I don't, I don't think we we really touched on. 
Oh, and that was the fact that when you went to do this and build this, you built it away from your office, away from the distractions there. Yeah. And and you brought your wife with you. Yeah, I did. I mean, we, it, you know, and and Alex again. I mean, I can't give enough credit to him. I mean, when 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 he created his company values, which I can say them today: stability, integrity, dream big, expression, and service. I'm not only I don't even work for Alex's company, but this thing struck a chord with me so hard that I remember what his values were when he shared them with me. And he said that he and Katie determined these values and said that that was the direction they were going to go. And the funny thing is, when my wife's name is Bryn, when Bryn and I went to Chicago, the first day nothing happened. I mean, we just kind of hung around, hung out, and I would sit there with my head just looking at a blank sheet of paper, and I would write a few things down that just felt extremely cliche and a little too, um, you know, just like a corporate mission statement that sounded really good, but in reality was just fluff. And and then until I wrote Obsession with Service, and that was just the first, that was the first stroke, and then I wrote Utilize the Imagination, and then Rapid Response, and then Strategy in All Things, Truth and Trust, Old School Work Ethic, Old School Work Ethic, relationship focus and you get what you give. I mean they just they just started rolling off. And that's you know, these instruments, I mean I can't say enough. The instruments are your talents. The instruments are your passions. Instruments are your ideals, those ideas that you believe in. Your instruments are your core values. Your instruments is your conscience, that thing that you just can't shake, that thing that you must do. Um, you know, a lot of people just think, well, I don't have any instruments or anything like that. You've got a ton of them. Uh, you know, there's so many things that people can get passionate about and that they can align their lives and businesses behind. Um, and in a world where there's so much choice, like there's just so much to do and choose, to me, it's refreshing when it's like, hey, we don't have a lot of choices to make our music. We've got these things here. And we're going to marry ourselves and align ourselves behind these values and ideas, and here we go. So it really takes some stress out of choosing you know, in a in an economy of endless choice, it takes some stress out of that. That's great. That's that's, that's really amazing. So uh, now, the the fact that you brought alignment in your life, and it started with Bryn and and, and the two of you doing this, starting this journey together. How important has that been in your personal life? As you know, as an entrepreneur, I mean, we, we, the battle is always staying balanced, right? Business, personal, family, and community. And in your in your family life, building that alignment around your wife and your family must have been powerful. Did you see any impact there? Well, you know, uh, I'm I'm really starting to see the impact. I've got two young daughters. Three, one turned three today. Another one just turned one, and I, I'm starting to see the future value of this of really breaking down as to what we as a family stand for and as what we as a family believe, what we as a family encourage, what we as a family rally behind. Um, that's To me, that's the most rewarding thing of this whole metaphor is that it's, it's not something that just happens behind a desk, but it's something that also happens at the dinner table at home. It's not something that just happens at home. It's things that also happen interacting with friends and building relationships uh, through business and through social circles. Um, and so, it, you know, it's this big ocean that we now swim in of music. And um, the beautiful thing about it, I, I, I think, is that um, it, it's, a little, it, it's a little mysterious, you know. I feel like at some point... Um, I'm always going to keep learning about this. There's some, there's a quote somewhere, you know, the journey is the reward. Um, this journey into music, it's not a code that we can really crack, you know, like we're going to have new songs, new melodies, new riffs, uh, and we roll with it, but we know what our instruments are. And our only hope and prayer is that at the end of the day, we can look back at our lives and say, we made music, we didn't make noise. And, and I think that's where the fulfillment is. You know, being able to say, I'm glad I did, I think is greater than being able to say, I wish I had. Um, and that's the forefront and the focus of the whole musical concept. Glad I did. It's greater than I wish I had. That's a great yeah. way to end this. Ashton, our time is up today. 
But this was a lot of fun. I hope I can bring you back again. Governor, I'd be glad to, man. Sure am uh, thankful for you, your passion, your metaphor that you're bringing to us. I think you're doing great things, and the world's going to change because of it. Likewise. I I love your story. Thanks so much. Okay, man. Thank you. A great conversation with Ashton. You know, amazing, amazing person. And one of the things that I... I think that just comes off of him is his authenticity. And it has to come from the fact that he's always playing those instruments, right? He's always working from his core values, from his core as a leader. And that is contagious. It's contagious because when someone is so comfortable and working from their core, then we all want to follow. That's our job as a leader, to make our teams work from that same place. It's an incredible thing. An incredible gift that he has. And I think that he does that on small stages and in big stages alike. If you'd like to join in the conversation about Ashton or any of the other napkins, please visit papernapkinwisdom.com. Alternatively, you can follow along at Wise Napkin or like our Facebook page, Paper Napkin Wisdom. My name is Govan J. Raman. This was Paper Napkin Wisdom. Thank you for listening.